Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wabarakatuh And a very good day to all So this video is basically the part 2 uh, On the prediction analytics So in this video I will be using Minitab And share with you how to forecast a data with trend behavior And how to forecast a data with random behavior So for this uh, video I'm using the actual electricity reading uh, That I have collected Okay, since 1st June until 24th June and I have already key in the uh, data in Minitab so I will be using Minitab to predict the electrical reading for the next 6 days okay for these two categories of data first is on the cumulative reading and second on the 24 hours electrical consumption but before that this is the basic flow that I have performed actually so collecting the data completed and what next is basically to use the time series plot in Minitab for me to perform the preliminary analysis. So this is important for me to understand the behavior of the data that I have collected. Okay, why? Because from this step, then I know what will be the proposed candidate. Okay, for the forecasting. For example, if my data has a trend, then I need to evaluate both trend analysis and double exponential smoothing and from there I need to decide which between these two is the best tools to use okay so how to decide okay that is actually the step number four which is diagnose model accuracy and stability so I need to observe uh, these three measurement that will be provided by the NITEP. first is the MAPE so MAPE stand for mean absolute percentage error the lower the uh, the value of MAPE is, the better. So, for example, if the calculated MAPE is five uh, percent, so meaning to say, the model has ninety five percent accuracy. So, personally, I prefer to have MAPE less than twenty percent. And the next two parameter are first MAD, which is mean absolute deviation, and also MSD, the mean squared deviation. I have to make sure that the tools is giving the smaller value. For all these three because the smaller value generally indicating a better fitting model and also on top of these three uh, parameter I also need to perform the residual uh, the normality test for the residual and also the stability test for the residual I need to ensure that the residual plus normality and also plus the stability test so stability test uh, I can use either run chart or box plot or individual chart but in this example later on I will be using run chart so once I have uh, completed the diagnose model accuracy and stability step, then I will know the best tools for me to produce my forecast. Okay, let's go to Minitab. So this is the Minitab file. So I've collected the actual uh, kilowatt joule, a uh, kilowatt jump. Okay, this is uh, equal to kilowatt hour. Okay, from my electric meter. So from first up until twenty fourth of June. So the first step that I need to do is I need to gain understanding on the behavior of the actual KWJ. So I use time to this plot. I select simple because I only have one variable which is C2. Double click actual KWJ in the series box and then click time slash scale. Okay, select stem and this is where I need to select date so that I will have date in my X axis. Click OK and click OK. Alright, so this result a linear trend. So once I understand that the data that I've collected uh, demonstrate a linear trending, then I need to go for the first candidate, which is the trend analysis. Okay, variable, actual KWJ, model type. I use linear because from the previous time series, it is a linear. Okay, so time stamp the date again click ok and click ok then i get the first result from my trend analysis by using linear model type so as you can see minute will calculate the mape mad and also the msd so next i also need to evaluate the second candidate which is double exponential smoothing all right the same actual kwj and then time stamp the date and for the weight to use in smoothing, I prefer to use the default, which is optimal arima, rather than uh, selecting the specific weight. 
okay, in between 0 to 1 in this level and fan box. Okay, so I just click OK here. Okay, now I have MAPE, MAD and also MSD uh, from this double exponential smoothing. So to make ease of the comparison, so I will be using the layout tool. Okay, select column to 1 and then select trend analysis result. All right and maximize this rough so easily i can see or i can make comparison between mape calculated by using linear trend and also calculated by using the smooth uh, the double exponential smoothing so obviously i will be selecting double exponential smoothing to forecast my cumulative reading for the next six days because double exponential smoothing has a smaller value in terms of mape MAD and also MSD comparing to the trend linear model. So I need to go back to step time series and the double exponential smoothing. Okay, this is where I click the general forecast. And since I want to forecast for the next six days, so I just key in six here. And starting from origin, I leave it blank. This main mini tag will generate forecast from the last point of my data. Okay. So, graph, this is for uh, residual normality and residual stability. Okay, at the same time, also want to store the residuals. Alright, okay. So, the, we have the lower and also the upper uh, range for my actual KWJ. And this is the forecast value uh, for my cumulative reading in terms of actual KWJ for 25th up until 30 of June. Okay, and this is the graph. Before I can use this forecast and also lower and upper forecast, I need to validate the residual normality and also the residual stability. Okay, from naked eye, it seems everything is okay, but if uh, I want to go for more detail to get a number for this normality test and stability test, this is where I need to use normality test and select race C1 in the variable box. So I have the p-value more than 0 0.05. So I need to say there's no problem uh, in terms of the normality of the residuals. And then I need to go to set quality tools, run chart. Okay, select race C, sub size 1, click OK. And I need to observe all these four p-value. Okay, since all the four p-value is more than 0 0.05, so we need to say I have no problem in terms of the stability of the residuals. Okay, so in this case, I can use okay, this forecast value and the lower and upper forecast for my next six days in terms of cumulative reading in C2. So that is for the first part. So the second part that I need to do is I want to know the 24 hours electricity consumption. All right, so what I need to do Okay, I give a name to this C4, the diff. So basically, I need to calculate the difference between 1st June and 2nd June uh, 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 data. So this difference will tell me the 24 hours electric consumption. So I need to do from uh, for data from 1st June up until 24th June. So I will using time series difference. Okay, so this is this actual KWJ store difference in diff with the lack of one. So one day difference. Click OK. So I will get the difference. Okay, 19.6 is basically the difference between 2nd and 1st June. 25.9 uh, is the difference between 3rd and 2nd of June. So I need to copy this one first. Okay, put it here. Okay, let's say this is 24 hours usage. And now I need to examine the behavior of this 24 hours usage data. So I'm using the same time series plot. Simple. All right, 24 hours usage. Time scale remain the same. Click OK. Then I will draw this result. So this is not showing any seasonal and not showing any trending. So this is what we call a random data. So once I understand, it is random data, so I need to first evaluate the moving average. Okay, so variable will be 24 hours usage. MA length is a moving average length, so since I want to monitor closely 
in daily basis, so I need to use two. All right. If you want to have uh, in a seven days uh, average, then you can put seven in the empty line. So this one two for my case. All right. And time the same thing. I need to stamp my date here, and I will get the first moving average. So this is MAPE, MAD, MSD. So I need to compare it with the single exponential. So next step, time series, single exponential smoothing, okay, variable, 24 hours, using uh, the default optima, uh, optimal ARIMA, time, stamping the date, and now I get the MAPE, MAD, MSD. So the same thing, using the layout tools for comparison purpose. So trend analysis, so this one I need to select for moving average, yeah, this one. Finish. Okay, let me maximize this graph. So from here, obviously, alright, I need to use single exponential smoothing to predict the next 6 days of my 24 hours electricity consumption because uh, single exponential smoothing yield a better result compared to the moving average. They have uh, lower MAPE, lower MAD and lower MSD. So, I need to go back to single exponential smoothing. Okay, the same thing, click on general, uh, generate forecast, 6 days. Okay, storage, the residual, because I want to check the residual normality and also the stability. And if you want to have this uh, graphical, you can go to point 0.1, click OK and OK. Okay, now I have the lower and the upper range for my next 6 days in terms of 24 hours electricity usage. Alright, so before I can use that as my reference, okay, from naked eye, seems okay for normality and okay for stability. But to confirm further, I will proceed with normality test on the residue. Yeah, the p-value more than 0 0.05. No problem with normality of the residual. And run chart. Okay, quality tool, sorry. Run chart. Residue, click OK. So again, I have all those four p values more than 0 0.05. Then this is confirmed that I have no problem in terms of stability and also in terms of normality of my uh, residual. So that is how okay uh, you can use Minitab to predict, okay, to predict or to forecast a data with trend behavior and data with random behavior. So that's all. Thank you for watching.